content warning. This episode includes discussion of sensitive topics, including school shootings, suicide, and pedophilia. If you are sensitive to such topics, discretion is advised. You're Hello, welcome to Your Movie, My Movie with Dan and Steve. I'm Dan. And I'm Steve. Uh, This is a podcast where one of us picks a movie to watch and discuss. In this episode, we're talking about one of Dan's picks, the uh, 2021 movie, We're All Going to the World's Fair, directed by Jane Schoenbrunn. We will be talking about spoilers, so if you want to watch the movie first, now's the time to do so. But before we talk about the movie, Dan, who would you recommend this for? Hmm. This movie I would recommend for... Huh. Well, I don't want to, like, exclude people, because I think people can watch it. I would Uh say especially (laughs) non-boomers. So maybe anyone Gen X or younger... But especially people who grew up in the 2000s. For sure, yeah. Um, yeah, I saw this as a very Gen Z movie. Or maybe even older Gen Z. I don't know. Yeah, this movie is definitely um, made for the generation that does not know a world without YouTube. <laughs> or, yeah. or social media. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, this is a very, yeah, this is a mo- definitely a movie for that generation, for sure. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Who would you recommend this for? I mean, um, I mean you kind of agreed. <laughs> well, I mean, um, it's an it's an indie horror movie, mm-hmm. uh, very much so. And so, like, if you do like indie horror, I think this is a pretty good movie for you because one movie that I got a lot of vibes from uh, while watching this was um, House of the Devil, mm. and that was that was done by. And that's a 2000, uh, that's a 2009 movie directed by uh, Ty West. Oh, okay. Yeah, and he went on to, um, to do Innkeepers, and I he think... Just he just did X and Pearl, I think. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah, um, House of the Devil was, that might have been his, I think it might have been his um, debut, you know, de- de- debut feature film. Hmm. And so I got, I got a lot of vibes from of that movie you know in this one um but that might also be because you know they're independent horror movies so yeah (laughs) they have the same they have similar constraints Mm -hmm. i will say though as far as independent horror goes and you know the production value between the two movies i think we're all going to the world's fair i think that handles it a lot better than house of the devil did because house of the devil it does have like I feel a mm. lot of um, scenes where nothing is happening, <laughs> you know, or not, or not enough is happening, but that doesn't happen in this movie. It feels that way. Yeah, um, sometimes. yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, you know, yeah, I, I still think it works. Yeah. Yeah. I especially mm. like that aspect. I like, well, you know, you know me, I like really slow movies. To begin yeah, with. for sure. Lingering but, movies. Yeah. Lingering. Yeah. Uh, but this movie I like because I don't always know what to think or what to expect or even what to feel. So like Mm -hmm. when things are going on for a long time, it's just, it, it's more suspenseful for me. Absolutely. Yeah. And that's a great way. Um, I mean, that's one of the benefits of, um, that's what you can expect from indie horror movies is that, um, they're going to be suspenseful. Because mm-hmm. they are going to linger because of the constraints, you know, yeah. like uh, this movie, it was only 86 minutes, you know, it's not even, mm-hmm. a, you know, 90. And there were a lot of lingering moments, but it never felt too slow, you yeah. know, and um, and so what it did was, you know, like half the devil, 
Uh, one of the things that I think people like about that movie is how atmospheric it is. Mm -hmm. It's not necessarily about the characters or the plot. It's about the atmosphere. It's about the mood. Mm -hmm. um, these kind of movies get you in the mood. And, you know, uh, House of the Devil and this one, we're all going to the World's Fair, definitely has a mood and definitely has an atmosphere. Yeah. Mm -hmm, for yeah. sure. This movie is like, I don't know, it just, it's very nostalgic for me in weird ways. Mm -hmm. And like, personal, like, because I grew up making YouTube videos and putting them on the internet and getting eight views. And, like, talking to cameras in my backyard and, you know, walking around to cemeteries and stuff. Um, <clears throat> I wasn't nearly as depressed. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I should mention there's going to be some trigger warnings yeah, in this episode. Yeah. But, yeah. So, that was something weird because it's just, like, a weird mirror mm -hmm. to, like, see yourself in the you know acted out through this this girl on screen casey it's really strange because it's like it, it shows you how weird you are or you know shows yeah. me how weird i am and um that it's not super like it doesn't make a lot of sense to do that to make like youtube videos i don't know it was like it's like i don't know right like it doesn't make sense like, to make videos for, you know, to value yourself in a weird way. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's what I did. I don't know if that's what Casey's doing. But she definitely is looking for connection. I think. Yeah. Very briefly, uh, let me go through the plot. Okay. So, so and correct me if I'm wrong in any mm -hmm. place. But basically, what this movie is about is there's this uh, viral social media challenge going on. Yes. Called called the world's fair mm -hmm. and how you get into it is apparently you're supposed to like say that i want to go to the world's fair three times yeah. and then you prick your finger so that you bleed mm -hmm. and then you have to watch this particular video that's on like youtube now they don't have youtube yeah. <laughs> but it's essentially youtube yeah and so she does all of those things Mm -hmm. And then she's like, okay, well, you know, I'll let you know if anything changes because other people who have taken this challenge, they say that they've undergone weird changes, mm -hmm. you know, like someone becomes a, uh, an evil clown mm -hmm. and one woman says that her skin has turned to plastic. Mm -hmm. And so she does this challenge to see, and you know, she, she's going to update people in her, uh, in her YouTube channel about all these changes and, you know, record herself so, so that they can see it as it happens. And so, yeah, that's what this movie is. And then, you know, at some point there's a guy who gets in contact with her, talks to her, and you know, that's an aspect to it as well. Mm -hmm. But yeah, yeah, that, that, that's basically the plot of this movie is this, um, uh, and she's like a teenager, maybe 15, 16. Yeah, 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 around there probably. Doing this social media challenge. And yeah, you, you know, you mentioned isolation. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's a big... That's a big deal in this movie because I don't think there's not a frame in this movie where you see two people in you know existing together in the physical space. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. There's not a single one that yeah. I can remember. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's one not in the same physical space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not in the maybe same on a screen, screen, but no. Yeah, yeah. and so. Yeah, that movie, uh, in that way, this movie really touches upon, you know, I mean, it's an, it's an old theme, mm -hmm. but, you know, it's always relevant, is how, you know, technology brings us together, but also isolates us. Yeah. Because, you know, because we can share our life on social media now, and, um, you know, we can record ourselves on YouTube and put it up and have other people watch it, in a way we are all connected with each other. But because there's not always interaction, it's still isolating. Yeah. 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 I mean, this, um, I remember like basically commenting on people's videos and like almost kind of making friends with other people on, mm -hmm. from other YouTube channels. And like I would see their videos every once in a while, like comment back and forth. It just, it wasn't like a normal relationship, right. but it was something. 
and it was it was it's just weird it's it's yeah it's scary almost how much things have changed yeah and i remember when i had moved to florida when i was like 15 14 area i didn't have many friends especially when i moved to our area now mm -hmm. um i had even less friends and i was making a lot more youtube videos and yeah it was the, very much the same thing like i didn't i didn't know how to like go up to people and start talking to them eventually i did but like yeah i was also homeschooled at the time mm -hmm. so it was like even less people to see so i mean it's just like a lot of things i can relate to in this movie weirdly yeah but um yeah it's a crazy movie for sure a lot of a lot of things to break down first i guess i want oh, to yeah. talk about how long the takes are mm -hmm. it's crazy uh it reminds me a lot of um what is it called i think it's called the vast of night um it's a movie about an alien uh, sort of it's like a twilight zone movie made in like 2016 All right Anyways, it's very indie, and they had, like, very, very long takes. But, I mean, that's what I really liked. That's one of the things I liked about this movie, that I thought it did really well. Mm -hmm. um, it doesn't, you know, I don't think it takes it too far, because you, you do have cuts. Mm -hmm. um, but it does kind of mesmerize you. For sure. This, this movie is a mesmerizing movie. Mm -hmm. And um, I really like that about it, and that kind of like puts you in a headspace just by showing you stuff. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it, it it's, takes place, I think, in New York. Okay. Um, and I just wrote down uh, Midwest Core <laughs> 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 because I was born in Ohio, and you know, growing up, I would visit there in the summer and in the winter, basically once or twice a year. Mm -hmm. And this is just like that it's like completely barren there's like like there's like a montage in the towards the beginning where the credits are rolling and it's just like like empty looking best buys in the winter time and like an empty toys r us yeah toys r us they're out of business yeah empty parking lots like slush on the ground mm -hmm. and alex g um have you ever listened to alex g i don't think so they're very much um i don't i don't know they they started making music I don't know, early 2010s, but they're very much Midwest sound. It's they're uh, like they're, they're the composer. Yes, they okay. had they were they were responsible for a lot of the songs. Okay, the original songs on the soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Um, they got a credit. I listened to them. Um, but but anyways, they're very much like bedroom pop, and associated very much with the Midwest sort of right. lonely atmosphere. <laughs> I, I I definitely got a similar vibe to uh, for Ellen. <laughs> yes, <laughs> in this yes. movie. Yeah, yeah. This could like take place in the same cinematic universe. <laughs> Absolutely. Also, it could take place in the same cinematic universe as Ringu. The uh, well, yeah. Sort that's, of. that's well, yes, it could. Well, I mean, like that's the other thing too, is because like a lot of the themes that are in Ringu are also in this movie as well, like yeah. a ton. It's it's surprising. Yeah. Although uh, this movie takes like such a different take on it. Yeah, it's so different. Mm -hmm. Um, they're not similar movies at all. No, which is great, but they all, but they still talk about like a lot of the same things. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the things that they have in common, like um, media as as contagion viral mm. media <laughs> yeah you know mm -hmm. that's what that's what sadako and and you know her the tape for her it, it, that that's kind of interesting because it's like viral it, it's viral media prior to the internet mm -hmm. but what gets it around is the story of the urban legend yeah. so like that's an analog viral yeah uh yeah yeah viral media um, but yeah, this is about viral media because yeah, there's a whole cha media challenge, and then all these people post like theories and lore. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because that's another thing. Like, I know a lot of the reference in here. Like, really? Yeah, yeah. I I can spot. There's so many things, and I'm like, oh, that probably inspired this movie. Like, do you know about the Slender Man? Yeah. 
this that's what this is yeah <laughs> there's yeah. a lot of slender man in this mm -hmm. and um you know because um slender man you know that was a uh, creepypasta you, you, you know someone like you know made those pictures and you know like one person you know wrote lore about it and then some other person on the same forum, you know, wrote additional lore to it. And so it's like crowdfunded um, horror lore mm -hmm. and mythology over this, you know, you know, fictional character. Mm -hmm. And so like that's what this movie is really a take on, mm. you know, not in the process of, of, of making it or anything, but like kind of like the consequences of what happens, you know, like the late stage aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And like one of the ways that I, I realized that it was, you know, not necessarily from all the, 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 the videos about lore and mythology from it, but they show what's basically a YouTube show. Yeah. <laughs> um, let me see. I, I wrote it down. It's like Dark Signal. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Is this the one where the kid is walking and talking to the camera? Or when, when is this? What do they mean, the YouTube show? It's called like Dark Signal. Dark Signal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dark Signal. Um, that's the one where it's like the, the, it, it cut it away. Um, and like there's the guy talking on the, uh, on the phone. Um, and then it cuts to the guy he's talking to and he's like staring at the laptop mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you know, he, he, you know, basically watches the video, but there's like a blood smear on the screen. Yeah. And then it stops and then you see the ghost, yes. <laughs> a ghost, you know, pop out of the laptop screen, grab him and then pull him inside the video. Yeah. You know? And so well, that's a ring reference right there. Yes. That's a reference to the ring right there, obviously. Absolutely. But that's also a reference to Marvel Hornets. Which I have not seen, but like it's a similar YouTube show. Hmm. It's got production value and everything, mm -hmm. but like it's it supposes to like take place within the Slender Man mythology itself. Huh. Just like Dark Signal takes place within the World Fair, yeah, universe, universe. itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. Um, so that was one reference. Well, two references I got: The hmm. Ring and uh, and Marvel Hornets. Um, but another reference I got was like to Heath Ledger's portrayal of the Joker mm. in The Dark Knight mm. when she paints her face with the glow in the oh. dark. Yeah, 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 she does that. Yeah. And then she, like, acts really crazy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, um, I think that's a bit more oblique, but, you know, mm -hmm. nonetheless, you know, dead on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Reference to that. Yeah. You know, about, you know, you would have, like, these YouTubers who nor normally, you know, would be, you know, ha would have normal conversations and so forth. Mm -hmm. But then, you know, the Dark Knight showed up, and you had all those Joker fans. Yeah. And then they, you know, dressed up like the Joker, and they just acted out of their fucking minds. <laughs> <laughs> in yeah. these videos. And I, oh, that's probably what that is. So. Yeah. I think it's just crazy, like. I don't know, it's weird because like acting is so strange because you like delude yourself mm -hmm. to make yourself feel a thing. And I mean, that's what I saw when I saw her do that. Like, I mean, it's just like whenever you're a kid and you're playing and you're imagining things to the best of your ability and you you imagine so much you almost go to like a weird place just yeah. to try and just because you're trying to imagine so hard i guess i don't mm -hmm. know that's what i felt like when i was watching that it's like it's weird really strange well there's definitely a there's definitely a huge theme of disassociation yeah throughout this movie like let's see it like starts out with um like she's watching YouTube videos of this guy who said that he took the World's Fair challenge and now he can't feel anything. Yeah. And so, you know, you see him running on a treadmill and he just keeps slapping himself in the face over and over and over again. And you know, it doesn't have any an effect. And like Casey, the the main character that we, you know, see mm -hmm. um throughout a lot of the movie, she has a flat effect. Mm -hmm. You know, her facial expressions are not emotive. They don't really show her emotion, you know? Yeah. I mean, yeah, I agree. I also think that like, yeah, I don't know. It just works so well. Yeah. I guess that's what I want to say. Like it works so well. And I feel like her face does say a lot, even though she's also not, she's purposely saying that it's not saying a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, like, like she's not doing that because, 
she's a bad actress. And, you know, this mm-hmm. is her first feature length movie, I think, you, mm-hmm. know, you know, it says introducing. Yeah. Um, so this is her, her first movie, but yeah, I don't think they're doing it because they think she's a bad actress or anything. It's, yeah. it's specific. It's, it, it's on purpose. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for and sure. It's fantastic. I thought it was, I mean, I watched, this is the second time I watched it mm-hmm. and it was, just, it was especially captivating the first time. And it helped that I literally, the first time I watched it was on a computer screen <laughs> in like sitting in my bed and it was, it was, it was so effective yeah. in that medium. But this was, was, this was cool too. It was different, but yeah, I, it was, yeah, disassociation is very much. Yeah. I mean, even, yeah. Yeah. Well, she, you know, she Everything. talks about, yeah, yeah. She talks about how when she was younger, she would sleepwalk. Yeah. So that's an aspect of, uh, of the disassociation. And she would tell herself scary stories in order, you know, to go to bed at night. And then, you know, there's that other, ask, you know, part later. Well, well, she's talking to that one guy. Uh, JB, JLB. JLB. Yeah, JLB. And so, you know, she talks about how, like, she, she, she feels herself, like, going to another place. Or, like, oh, oh what, what it is is, like, she sees herself, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And that's an aspect of, you know, disassociation. Mm-hmm. And there's also the part where, you know, she's doing that video where she's dancing. And like, it's so, it's, it, it, you know, she's dancing like, like, like a pop, you, yeah. you know, like a pop star or something, Yeah, you know, and, it, you know, she's like, you know, smiling and she's like doing all these big movements mm-hmm. while she's dancing. And then in the middle of it, she just stops and she screams real loud. Mm-hmm. And then she goes right back to it. So there's that part. And there's also the part where she, you know, she has the uh, face paint on. Yeah. And she talks about how she had that, you know, her toy lemur mm-hmm. uh, since she was four days old. Yeah. Um, and then she just rips it up. And then in another video, you see, you know, she's like surprised that she did this. And Same like, video, yeah. She can't believe that she did this. Yeah. So, yeah, disassociation is such a huge, huge theme mm-hmm. in this. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Inter- I never have, like, learned much about disassociation uh-huh. or thought about it. Mm-hmm. But I think it's something I guess I relate to in some ways. <laughs> and thinking about it, I, I remember we made the my, you know, college film, a short film. It's called Between the Rings. I was talking to the, the main actor and... I was like, so yeah, you're just kind of standing, staring off in the distance, kind of wavering back and forth. And he was like, oh, so disassociating. I was like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I think I, I like, you know, unconsciously know about that. Right, right. There's a quote that she says about the um, date. Also, there's a lot of talk about dreaming, which I think is part mm. of that probably disassociation in another word. But she says that whenever she would kind of sleepwalk she would stand out and watch the cars or things like that and she said i might be aware that a car is coming or that is coming but i would just stay there and she's like not that she did stay there but just that one day she might or something yeah 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 um they won't one day, yeah yeah she's like afraid that she's gonna sleepwalk and then get hit by a car yeah yeah and there's another moment where she is i think it's the first time she sets up her camera her laptop camera to record her sleeping, herself mm-hmm. sleeping. She's like, ah, this is stupid. She, she's messing around. She gets in bed and she's messing around with the lamp, but she's annoyed, can't sleep. And so she goes and is like, this is stupid. No one watches this anyways. Yeah, 32 views. Yeah, and mm-hmm. she goes uh, back to the laptop and she's like, there's a moment where she just looks at herself and like, I just see like disgust almost. <laughs> she just slams the laptop down. Mm-hmm. I was like, for some reason, I can relate to that. <laughs> Yeah, but okay, so 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 then what did she do? She then goes she, out to the yeah, barn. Yeah. And then she sets up a projector, I guess. And, it's already set up. She just oh, turns Okay, it on. yeah. Okay, it's already set up. Okay, yeah. And and then she plugs into her laptop. But first, uh-huh. I think well, we see the gun. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. First she takes out the gun. Mhm. Opens the gun case, looks at the gun. Uh-huh. Just stares at it. <laughs> yeah, and like this is like an AR15 basically. It's a yeah. rifle, you know, yeah. a military rifle that her dad has. Mhm. And it 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 kind of becomes a plot point, but mm-hmm. on the other hand, you know, uh, we're talking spoilers. 
one of the few instances where um, Chekhov's gun rule is broken. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> as far as we know, at as least. far as we know, yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so um, yeah, she 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 pulls out the gun, but it's also like it's kind of weird too, mm-hmm. um, because it's like you know why? What other reason does she have to pull out that rifle in that moment other than to show the audience that the gun is there? <laughs> you know what I mean? I. I thought it was pretty justified just because, I don't know, just because it's like, it shows her just contemplating suicide in a way. That's oh. the way I saw it. Oh, interesting. Of like that sort of looking into death almost and like that morbid fascination. Yeah, for sure. And I, that's the way I saw it was mm-hmm. she's looking at it because she's thinking about what it, what yeah. it does, death in a way. Mm-hmm. And that's the way I saw it. Okay, interesting. I don't know. It was also to show the audience. Yes, it was also to show the audience that there's a gun. Yeah. Um, and yeah, that's when she goes into the other part. And, and so she pulls up this YouTube video of um, ASMR. Mm-hmm. A girl doing ASMR, talking about go to sleep and you'll have sweet dreams and yeah. uh, you're in a safe place. So you, you woke up in the nightmare or you might have yeah, had a nightmare, yeah. a bad dream. Yeah. But it's okay. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But, like, that's another aspect, I think, of, you know, isolation. Mm -hmm. You know, she's seeking, she's isolated, so she's seeking comfort through a video. Yeah. You you know, there's still that distance, Mm -hmm. but but she still needs comfort, but she's physically alone, so the closest thing that she can get is an ASMR video. Yeah. So. I think that's a a huge reason why ASMR is so popular. mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah, it's 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 popular because people are in need of comfort. You know, that's available for them to comfort them. But also, she's just one person out of so many who have watched that video. Yeah. You know, so there's also that aspect of even though it's comfort and even though it feels intimate, mm-hmm. it's still produced for the masses. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so like, you know. We'll talk about other theme. We'll talk about this theme in other ways, I'm sure. But like, there's also a theme of like fakery, artificiality. You know? yeah. yeah, artificiality. Yeah, yeah. I was thinking like, you know, there's a lot of Philip K. Dick. Philip K. Dick would love this movie. Yeah, and and so like, yeah, that there's also that part of artificiality in this movie, and it's also kind of weird because it's like everything else about this movie is like the artificiality of horror. Um, but in that moment, it's like about the opposite. It's about the artificiality of, you know, comfort, mm. you know? Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that they put that in as kind of like a, a foil and like, you know, for the rest. And also to, you know, it's like the need versus want, mm-hmm. you know, it's, you know, you know, I think that might be why she did that because her wanting to connect with people and like feel comfort is that need, you know, that's why she's taking this challenge in the first place yeah. is to get people to watch her videos. Mm-hmm. And also that's why that guy contacts her and mm-hmm. they start talking and, you know, develop that kind of talking relationship. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, that's her need, but the want, you know, the way that she's going about it is to do this horror stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's very interesting. Yeah. It's super interesting. And I mean, Another thing about ASMR is that it almost like mimics like physical affection. Yeah. And like, yeah, again, there's no two people that share the screen except that that ghost that jumps out and grabs the, yeah. the, the <laughs> video content maker. You know, yeah. There's no two people that share a frame. And one thing I noticed in the be- almost the beginning, the very beginning, she's like sitting at the dinner table watching a video on her phone and eating dinner. And then she hears, she sees her dad pull into the driveway and she like hears the door open or whatever. And she takes the food and goes upstairs before he even comes inside. I thought that was very signatory. I don't know. Like it's It's very telling. Yeah. Telling. Thank you. That's the word. Yeah. Yeah. And so then we get into the relationship with JBL. No, JLB. Sorry. JLB. Yeah. Not the speaker brand. I kept wondering, I thinking it was like the JBL speakers or whatever. But what I really didn't expect him to be shown. Yeah. Like right off the bat, almost. Yeah. 
um, I thought that was a really interesting choice. Because usually these types of movies that have like internet relationships, like mm-hmm. you never see the other person until it's like a rele- review. Review. Mm-hmm. But yeah. I think I think that was done for a reason for for a couple of reasons. I mean, to, one is to like, I mean, I think it was done to show Casey isn't the only person who feels this way. Yeah, you, you know, um, you need to establish that pattern. And so, you know, he's just as isolated as well. And he's just mm-hmm. caught up. He's just as caught up in this stuff as well. And it's like, you know, even though he's older, you would expect him not to be. And he does show a little bit of distance, mm-hmm. you know, from, from the whole viral thing, you know, later. Um, but he's nevertheless, like, caught up in what's going on, basically. Yeah. You, he's still caught up in what this movie is about. It's just like different generations have the same struggle, yeah, in different yeah. ways. But now they are have a chance to connect. Well, in a weird uh, way. um, yeah, yeah. It's like different generations have the same struggle in this modern day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I think that's what that, but that's commentary about. You know, you see him like go through his house a lot. You know, when he's in the living room, he's you know looking at his phone. When he's on the toilet, <laughs> yeah. he's looking at YouTube videos on his phone. Uh, and then you see his bedroom and he has a computer like, like right in his bedroom. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because I know like there's um, like, you know, nowadays, you know, just to control all that and just to get away, mm-hmm. you know, just from electronics, you know, a lot of people, what a lot of people are doing are saying, you know, okay, no computers, not even a TV in my bedroom. Mm. Just so that they can have a place where they can get away from all that and, you know, you know, rest and, and so forth. Mm. So um, that's what that reminded me of, um, because I remember being young and having my computer in my room and I didn't get a lot of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a lot of sleep. Mm. But once I um, but once I got my computer out, I've been sleeping a lot better. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Yeah. Life pro tip for the audience there. My computer is in my bed. <laughs> <laughs> and my bedroom is very small. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love the the set design in this yeah. film. And I love uh JLB's room. Mm-hmm. It's really like I was so creeped out when I first watched this movie. <laughs> yeah. It looks like a boy's room. Yes. It's got childhood trophies, I'm assuming childhood, mm-hmm. like all over like his computer stand thing. And he's got like li- like artwork, um, taped to his computer, and I mean it's very neat, very mm, organized, but yeah. it's still like it's not messy, but it does feel infantile. Yes, yeah. yes, and like the sheets are blue, and like it it looks, mm-hmm. yeah, it just looks like a like a almost like a twelve year old boy's room. Yeah, for sure. And I love seeing him walk through this gigantic empty house. Mm-hmm. It's so weird. Mm-hmm. It's like, well, I mean, it's it's not empty. It's just not lived in. Yeah, it looks like a house that you would like one of those model homes almost. I mean, mm-hmm. I mean, you know, maybe not even that. I haven't walked in a lot of model homes, but yeah, uh, it it's just like if he left, if he left, it, yeah, it just it just doesn't feel lived in. You you know, there's no life in in it. There's no you know vivacity to it. You know, yeah. it's just. Yeah. It's it's not that it's empty, it's that it's soulless. Yeah. Yeah. He like I think his room obviously has the most soul. Um, but that's because that's where his computer is. Yeah. And that's how he connects to the outside world. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just very weird to think that like so many people can live in a house by themselves. And it's just weird. Yeah. <laughs> like like a big house. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like that big of a house. You know, I don't, it's just strange. Yeah. And you can tell that he doesn't have like a lot of friends that he hangs out with. No, no, <laughs> no, not at all. Um, so he's very socially, so, socially backward for sure. Yeah. But, oh, right. So he sends her a video reaching out in the beginning and, and, and we don't know who it's from at first, um, before the face reveal. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it's directly addressed to her. So mm-hmm. it's no longer, she's, she's no longer you know, seeing the view counter tick up, she's got a, a video response. You know, there is someone out there in the void who's seen her stuff. Right. And it's like, Casey, I need, you, I need to talk to you. You're in danger, things like that. But I do think it's interesting, I want to talk about this, that like, before he 
like she looks at his like Insta YouTube page or something like that. And um he's like, if you wanna play along with me or whatever, it it's all in game and it's all part of the game. And if you're not willing to do that, then like Yeah, he says that um he says that like he'll message well, yeah, like um, it's like he's for hardcore players of mm. of the game. Yeah. Um, and it's only an in-game channel. So if you're not hardcore into the game, don't bother messaging him. Yeah. Yeah. And so it implies that there is a artificiality. Yeah. To any relationship that would start from this channel. Yeah. And that there is um. Yeah, there's it's play acting. You yeah. know. And yeah, it's interesting. And so then from there, she responds with the video, and and um, yeah, they have Skype calls and stuff. Yeah, and like she never sees his face. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, I don't. She might. Yeah, they basically do a video call, but it's a one-way video call. Yeah, she shows her face, and he does not show his. He has a drawing for his profile picture, mm -hmm. like very creepy hooded drawing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, her videos, I'll start talking more about her videos, they're, they're more, I don't know, they're just, they're interesting, because she's talking to the audience, like they're a person, mm -hmm. like she relates to them, but she doesn't, unless she's, it's weird, because like the movie never tells you much, it doesn't no. explain much to you, Yeah, you get to figure it out yourself. Yeah, this movie is, is ambiguous in a good way <laughs> yeah yeah it's ambiguous um, in a good way there's like a scene where she does a tarot card reading and like the whole time i'm thinking that's definitely for for yeah. jlb yeah for sure but like and she even says you know who you are basically mm -hmm. but you know it's also like but anybody can't... else who watches mm -hmm. could say oh she's talking to me yes yeah <laughs> yes and you don't know for sure if she is talking to JLB. it's just pr probably most likely that's what it is well we only think that she's talking to jlb because he's the only other person you know that she interacts with yeah, yeah. so like we're thinking oh of course it's jlb but if she you know interacted with anybody else off screen you know mm -hmm. we we would have no idea yeah. you know it's like, I mean, I'm going to bring up a really weird reference, but um, <clears throat> on, I remember what, like catching, I, w I wasn't watching it, but there was like an episode of Dr. Phil on or okay. something. I don't know. I might've been over at a friend's house, but basically he was talking to a teenage girl who was obsessed with another teenage girl online. And she was saying that she was subtweeting at her and I had never heard about what subtweeting was, but like, apparently it's like where you send out general tweets to people, but you interpret it as directly talking to you. Mm. Um, and it might be, but it also completely could not be at the same time. Mm -hmm. And so it's a weird sort of like, you could totally deny that it's about any one person, or you could, it could totally be about one specific person. Yeah. It's another weird aspect about almost like the ASMR video. It's very mm -hmm. intimate, but yeah. it's also shown to whoever wants to see it. Yeah. Yeah, this movie is is very heavy on parasocial relationships. Yes, extremely. Yeah. One thing I uh, I noticed I want to quickly talk about it is that there's a video called like I'm turning I'm becoming plastic or something. Yeah. Yeah. Um very cool um sort of like art exhibit video on YouTube, like an art video on YouTube. But the music um well it's it's cool. It's like a it's like a girl like in her bra and underwear or like underclothes, I guess. Look with a ton of makeup on, almost made to made her to look plastic. And she's posing and she's striking these poses. And there's she's like bathed in red light and there's like a out of focus heart in the background. And there's like this music pulsing. And mm -hmm. then you you know you turn and you see her looking in the mirror at herself. And it's related to the World Fair somehow. Um I think it says it in the title. But that song that it's playing is the same song that she later dances to that Casey later dances oh, to. Oh, interesting. Which I thought was really interesting. Also in that video, there's a bunch of like Chinese finger traps underneath the mirror, uh -huh. which I thought was a weird symbol. 
Well, there's that one guy who, like, you know, always sits on the floor, mm-hmm. and we see a couple of videos of him because he's seen the World's Fair, and then he changes too. And he's like, "Oh yeah, I'm not. I wasn't like other kids. You know, other kids like to play with, you know, something or other, and then Chinese finger traps." So oh, he said that. Yeah, yeah, he oh, says wow. that. So you know, maybe the Chinese finger traps. You know, that maybe that's something that's part of the lore. You know, yeah. that, that that's made for the World's Fair. I also think of Chinese finger traps as like a symbol like you're trapping yourself yeah for for sure for entertainment in a weird way or you can you can you know trap yourself to another person too but it's weird it's a weird thing and it doesn't seem like it should be a toy necessarily but it is and it is entertaining yeah 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 and you know it's it's a kid's toy basically and yeah you know there's these young people you know getting caught up in this yeah yeah, and, and you know, you mentioned the girl who says, um, "I'm turning to plastic." Yeah, yeah. Basically, you know what this, what you know, we're all going to the world fairs about is, you know, you watch this video and you do these things, and then you transform in some kind of way. Yeah, and you know that that you know that video is where we get the first idea for that. But the thing is, is like we're not sure if it like actually does that because JLB, mm-hmm. uh, JLB, he says, "Yeah, yeah, you know, this is just a game." Mm-hmm. You know, he calls it an MMORPG, but that's not what this is. This is an ARG, which is a, stands for alternate reality game, mm. where, you know, we do real life things to play in part, you know, in the game. Mm. Um, and yeah. And so, like, we don't know if she's, you know, you know, if we were inside the game, <laughs> yeah. we think like she's really turning into plastic. But what's probably going on is, you know, you say it's makeup. You know, it could also be like, hey, she just has, you know, Adobe After Effects. Yeah, yeah. You know, and so, like, that's another, you know, kind of aspect to this movie is, like, you know, the democratization of filmmaking Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, we can record things on our phones Mm -hmm. and, you know, for special effects, all we need to do is get a subscription to um, Adobe After Effects and then, you know, learn how to do it on YouTube, you know, with Mm -hmm. YouTube tutorials. And then, you know, we can make these little videos ourselves. Another thing about that video, I'm turning into plastic, is that really reminded me of Neon Demon. Mm, I haven't seen that one, but I know about it. Okay, yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, mostly because of the visual aesthetic mm-hmm. uh, than, than anything else. But, you know, even so, that still might be a reference. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. Also, it reminded me of, oh, no. What is their name? Uh, I think it's Poppy. Have you watched any Poppy videos? No. They are like a a viral sort of, they used to just make mainly YouTube videos that are very strange and almost art installation like. Okay. You should watch some. They're really interesting. But now they make uh, music as well. But they're famous for just being extremely abstract mm-hmm. and, you know, very artificial looking as well. And that's just a lot of what that reminded me of. Oh, okay. Um. And there was like another, because it's cool, because they use the sort of buffering uh, autoplay YouTube looking transition for a lot of the parts of this movies in between videos or sometimes in between cuts. And I think that's a really cool idea to like, it, it's very like immersive into yeah, this movie. Sure. But um, there's another YouTuber who is just looking at the camera. I think they're called Ninx years or something but they're like a film critic youtuber and it was weird to see them because yeah. i didn't think anyone really watched them but i was like oh i don't know i watch them sometimes i don't mm-hmm. watch them like religiously or anything but it was weird to see them in a movie because i was like oh i, I thought that was more obscure than that but yeah. apparently it's not um <laughs> or the director likes obscure youtubers <laughs> yes and i think the director is very much involved in that sort of obs- like youtube world mm-hmm. obscure youtube world and i'm one of the reasons i chose to watch this movie is because of how new it is and of how young the director is and um i don't know that excites me to see new like this generation's movies are are coming out right now yeah um, I mean, it's starting, it's not, they're not, most of them, you know, it's not the mainstream to be the Gen Z movies, but they are coming out and yeah. I'm excited to see what they're like. Absolutely. Uh, one quick thing, you know, you talk about how immersive this movie is. Mm-hmm. The opening shot of this movie is like K 
Casey sitting down at the desk in her bedroom, Mm -hmm. but it's a POV shot from the point of view of her camera's, uh, her her computer's camera. Yeah. And so at first I was like, hey, is is this going to be a found footage movie? Yeah. Um, Yeah. Because the thing, I'm a sucker for found footage movies. (laughs) Like... (laughs) I admit I haven't watched a lot of them, mm-hmm. um, but I am willing to watch, you know, a found footage movie at any time. You know, I love gimmick movies and my favorite gimmick is found footage. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, and so I was like, oh, cool. Is it in? No, 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 no. It's not. <laughs> um, it's not, but it uses some of the same tools. I think. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it, it goes back and forth between, you know, a found footage POV and, you know, a more third person point of view. But even when it's a third person point of view, it still looks like they're using a hand camera. Yeah. 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 So it still has the feel of somebody like recording somebody with an iPhone. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. And that's another thing that I really like about this film. Yeah. Is because of how familiar it feels and weird. Like it feels very intimate. Yeah. Well, that's because, you know, there a lot of the artifices of in this film of, you know, the cinematography and so forth. Those artifices come from, you know, the democratization of, mm-hmm. of filmmaking. Like I said, you, you know, it feels, you know, with a the handheld, they use the handheld. So, you know, it looks like the kind of footage you'd get by holding your camera. Mm-hmm. When the shot is still, when it looks like it's on sticks, mm-hmm. um, it's because it's a computer yeah. and the computer isn't moving. And also, like, there are some shots that are in the long, like, Facebook as aspect ratio yeah you know not a lot but 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 there's a couple of them which mm-hmm. you know adds to that as well yeah so so yeah, yeah. yeah this movie you know really uses a lot of those you know the modern aspects mm-hmm. of you know like tiktok videos and yeah. so on and so forth it reminded me too because i just saw um so me and my girlfriend went to the american black film festival and there they premiered Issa ray's new show rap shit and a lot of that show takes place on like an Instagram screen oh. and it's like Instagram live and you see all the reactions to these live Instagram feeds. And it just reminds me of that a lot. It's very interesting. And it's just more thinking about how we consume media and how we process the world and reality is just really interesting. Yeah. If, if they haven't done it yet, somebody is going to make a movie purely on that aspect ratio. Just yeah. so it can be watched by watched on you know smartphones. Yeah, if yeah. not, you should be the first. You should yeah. do it. <laughs> one part I really like about this movie, I don't know, it's just like one sequence, like uh-huh. one really short sequence, is she's walking to uh, Casey's walking into a graveyard. Yeah, and Casey's like, "All right, this is my high school, and this is yeah. where." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know the, yeah the, that was that, yeah 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 that's where the whiteboard was that's where the desks are that's you know that's where my lockers are vice and principal's she, office yeah and she's just pointing at the gravestones yeah. yeah and it's like yeah this movie was made in america <laughs> this movie was made in america yes that, mo- that part like kind of punched me in the gut the first time i watched it yeah just because you know it's crazy like i you know i don't know i don't know when the i forget when you went to high school but like i just remember being i I was only in public school for two years and it was like the last two years but even then uh like parkland happened and like we had to go to school that week and it was just like this weird feeling of just unnerving anything could happen at any time Mm -hmm. this is terrifying but it's like it was just weird it was very spooky but um well yeah. columbine happened when when i was in high school you know but that columbine is like when these school shootings you know mm-hmm. j- first just got started yeah. yeah 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 but it's like is it but like you know i think the obvious reference to that is school shooting because you know that's obvious but yeah. it's like also you know there's lots of climate change because like you know, you guys don't have a future. <laughs> yeah. You 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 don't have a future on this earth. Let's just say it. Yeah. <laughs> With no no more beating around the bush. Um the planet is fucked. You're gonna inherit it <laughs> and it's not your fault. Yep. 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 So, you know, it's no you know, that it could be symbolism yeah. for that as well. Absolutely. And it doesn't yeah, I'm not saying that it is 
specifically school shooting. Yeah. Um, it just, but it does definitely give that feeling. I mean, what else could it be? Yeah. Yeah. And, but yeah, it's just a cool little, like, I mean, it's not, yeah, it's, it's a very emotional, impactful scene. I really dug that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's interesting that there's a part where, well, I'm sorry, the first, so there's a part where she starts, like, talking to a Santa Claus, right? The little Santa Claus statue with no eyeballs. Okay. Um, it's just, like, black, uh, black nothings for the eyes. She's like, stop smiling, stop smiling, and she, like, smacks yeah. it or something. But I just thought that that reminded me of earlier in the movie, whenever, um, JLB first react, uh, first reaches out to her, and the video is of her, or it's just a picture of her, but yeah. then it, like, turns into, like, her eyes go black and like distort. Mm-hmm. And so I just think it's again that sort of disassociation and that empty eyes. Well, that brings up another part because it's like, it's kind of interesting because, you know, there's a genre of horror called body horror. Mm-hmm. And, you, oh, who was it? Cronenberg. Mm-hmm. Uh, right, right, yeah. Uh, who is it? David, David Cronenberg, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. David Cronenberg. He was like the um, he's like the master of uh, of body horror. Yeah, and you know you see a lot of allusions to body horror in this movie because you know you have the girl who turns to plastic, you have the guy sitting and like you know his arm is changing, yeah, and then he pulls out those tickets <laughs> yes. to the fair. That was so cool. Was all, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you know then JLB yeah sends um that picture yeah yeah it's a it's basically like a screen capture from one of her videos and he like you know has distorted it in all these different ways you know when i saw that i didn't first think body horror i'm only thinking that because you know we're talking in movie Mm. terms now you know Mm. um what i thought at the time was body dysmorphia Mm. which is you know like a big deal going on you know with the young people in this you know young people nowadays you know and especially in regards to like you know you know there's also the how it relates to trans people as well. Um, you know, I don't think this film has trans elements, but it's just like it, m- my thought didn't go to body horror. It went to body dysmorphia. Yeah. I think this movie does have some trans elements um, in it. Um, okay. There are a few people who I think are, well, I think the, the filmmaker themselves is non-binary. Okay. And like, um, I think, yeah, there are a few people in like on the YouTube channels and stuff that are, I think, oh, um, that okay. are, are trans, which is really interesting too. But I don't think that's, I mean, it might not be directly related to the main character, Casey, mm-hmm. but it is part of the unconscious, you know, collective unconscious of, you know, her generation and stuff. Yeah, absolutely. For sure. Yeah. I wanted to jump to the end just in case we have to end, but okay. we don't have to end yet. So, uh, JLB reaches out to Casey mm-hmm. um, and he's like, your later video, your recent videos have been very disturbing or very like especially uh, unnerving kind of thing. I'm I'm a little concerned about you. Can we talk outside of the game for a minute? And she's like, Yeah, sure. I guess what's up. Well, 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 no. She says, Well, what do you mean? And he's like, Well, this is a game. Oh yeah. Don't yeah. you know that this is a game? And she's like, No. Oh yeah, yeah. I knew it was a game. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. And so he's like, I've been concerned about you and your videos and i thought about reporting them and calling the police but i don't know where you are yeah. um and that d- doesn't do any good but i'm worried about you basically and she's like you're so dumb this is all just like a this is a game this is made up i don't know why you're getting you're ridiculous and like she starts kind of berating him yeah she lashes out at him basically yeah mm-hmm. and then she says don't talk to me she she hangs up the skype call and she's like, don't ever contact me again. And then she calls him a pedophile Yeah. in the Skype chat. And yeah, I mean, watching this the first time, I definitely thought he was a pedophile. Yeah. And I mean, even this time, it's not sure that he's not, you yeah. know? <laughs> it's, it's really strange that, you know, uh, you know, he's in, he looks to be in, in his 40s or 50s. Mm-hmm. Um, and he's he's reaching out to you know high school girls. Yeah, it's very concerning, even if it isn't you know completely malicious. It's mm-hmm. not good. Yeah, protocol. it doesn't look good. It does not look good. Yeah, <laughs> at all. Yeah, 
um trying to like you know start playing games with underage people yes um <laughs> so then from there we never see casey again yeah yeah the film well it's interesting because earlier before she's like um i could disappear at any moment and you know nobody would know and so she's like you know basically talking about ghosting people yeah 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 and that's what happens kind of yeah so you never see her again you mm-hmm. just see you see jbl or jlb sorry and um you know first like his first reaction to like the pedophile thing is he walks away from the computer i think yeah. he almost like makes a guttural noise um, yeah. Maybe not. Maybe that's my imagination. Anyways, goes downstairs and like grabs the TV remote and sits on the couch and starts talking to himself mm-hmm. and comforting himself in a way. And just well, well, it's like he's kind of rehearsing on what to say to the next person he gets in contact with. Mm-hmm. At least that's what I got out of it. Mm-hmm. Because like what he starts to say is very similar to the video that he sent to Casey. Mm-hmm. So, you know, that's, that's what I was thinking was like, maybe he's trying to like, he's definitely upset, but like his coping mechanism is to like, you know, try to get somebody else, you know? And so like, he's practicing mentally on how to approach them and, you know, contact them and, you know, talk to them like the, you know, the way that, and call them the way that he did with Casey. Interesting. I did not see that at all. Yeah. That's really cool. Yeah. The first time I watched this, I was like, what is he going to watch on TV? And that was like freaking me out because I wasn't sure. Like, yeah. <laughs> I, I wasn't sure what he was going to pull up if he was going to yeah. pull up something like terrifying. Um, yeah, I'm glad this is not that kind of movie. Yeah. But it was weird because there was a ling- there's there's just a shot of mm-hmm. that TV and it's not even turned on. But it's really just I, the first time I watched it again, I was extremely uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. But like because I didn't know it was going to be shown. But. This time around, it was just like, what is... I didn't know what that meant this time around. But it was it was very interesting. Because he's holding the remote as he's talking to himself. Yeah. Um, but this time, I, I was careful to see if, like, he pressed... Or if his, hand, his finger goes near the power switch or anything like that. And I don't think it did. But it's still interesting that he held the TV remote and he sat down right in front of the TV. But, yeah. So... Then he goes back up, and he puts his hand right on the computer screen, like Spock and <laughs> well, 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 first he tries to call her again. Yeah. He calls her twice. You know, she doesn't answer. And yeah, that's when he reaches out to the screen and, like, you know, wanting to form an emotional bond with her again, mm-hmm. but can't connect, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. And so then... Um, we get, like, a bit of an epilogue. <laughs> yes. We, there's, like, a shot of him outside. And he's like walking around a little bit, but then he's talking voiceover. Yeah. And he's kind of saying what happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. He's outside, you know, doing his, you know, just, 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 you know, doing stuff outside, like sitting and stuff. Mm-hmm. And, you know, the voiceover, you know, happens during this time, but then it shows him, you know, sitting on his computer recording a message, basically. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's sitting down and he's saying that, you know, Casey went to, you know, a hospital, like a mental hospital for, for a while and then got out and reached out to him and they exchanged their real names mm-hmm. and then they made plans to meet up um, in Manhattan and they did and he described the meeting and that was just so it's just such a weird yeah. scene yeah um yeah he describes a meeting and uh what was it that he um oh do you remember what he said Oh, I don't, I don't even remember. Well, he gets to the part where she would say something. Yeah. Yeah. And he like goes into this different mode, almost like he's like disassociating Mm -hmm. and then inhibiting her body in a way. Yeah. And he does a high pitched voice. Yeah. Which which is her voice. And that freaked me the Uh fuck out when I first watched this. Um, That was so weird and uncomfortable, but he like says her words to him and then he responds in his voice and he's I forget the words. Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah. We had a great time, you know, in the city, you know, we got a slice of pizza. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, you know, she went her way and, and, and I went mine. Yeah. Um, and, it, and you know what? It's a fucking lie. Yes. <laughs> it's and, a fucking lie. And he says, he even says like, oh, go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, no, I'm just going to say, yeah, it's a fucking lie because all he's doing, he's, he's just using this as 
a story to add to the lore. Yeah. 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 This is all fake. Yeah. She didn't, you know, get back in touch with him. He's just needs to explain to her subscribers why she's not around anymore. Mm -hmm. And so he came up with this story in his head about the great day that they had. And it's a fucking lie. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> but he deludes himself. Yeah. You know, you know, like you said, and like Casey did. You know, it, mm -hmm. it's so self delusional. It, it's almost like he has to believe this is how it ended. Yeah, <laughs> and he, but he also needs to let other people know this is why Casey isn't showing any videos anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, instead of her, like you know, getting freaked out. You know, getting too deep into it and getting freaked out by him. Yeah, yeah. or. You know, ending her own life or yeah. something like that happening to her. Yeah. 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 So what were you going to say? <laughs> I was just going to say, like, the, he, like, mentions, like, they before they, they parted, they hugged or whatever. And he was like, I felt her. And it's just like, that was weird. Um, super weird. Yeah. But, um, yeah. I, again, like, you don't know. Like, it could have happened, but it didn't. Mm -hmm. um, but the thing is, you don't know for sure. Again. Yeah. Like, like this whole thing, you don't know if she's acting or if she's not acting. Yeah. She could be acting the whole time. Mm -hmm. I think there is some evidence that, that, that she doesn't remember that she's acting. And I don't know. It, that's hard to tell. Yeah. But that's what I love about the ending is you, you're not completely sure. Yeah. Is, 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 the, is the ARG real or is it fake? If it is fake, are any of them like so deep into it? that they're deluding themselves to, to it be, you know, believable? Yeah. Or are they, you know, still saying a step back? You never know any of those questions. Yeah. You don't know the answer to, to, to any of those questions. You're provided with one narrative. Yeah. And you have to decide if that's true or not. Yeah, absolutely. And it's really cool. Yeah. And I yeah. think that's, I just love that because, yeah, more and more in life, I'm realizing that, that you, you know, you get your narrative, and you have to figure out what's true or not, or uh -huh. you have to de decide what you believe, basically, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But you don't get any sure answers. And I think that's what I love about this movie, in a way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I can, I can go on a rant about how people do movies that movie endings that they think are ambiguous, but aren't. I'm looking at you, Annihilation. <laughs> But no, this movie is definitely ambiguous in the best sense possible. Yeah. For sure. I agree. Yeah, I thought this was a fantastic movie. I was really excited to show it to you. Do you have anything else you want to say about it? Um, um, I don't um, think so. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's a great, it's a great movie. It, it, it shows what you can do when you have constraints and a limited budget. One thing I wanted to say is like the, the thumbnail for the movie is Casey holding up the fake eye to the video screen, which mm -hmm. I don't know. I just think that's a cool symbol. Like, <laughs> yeah, for sure. She's looking at you with a fake eye mm -hmm. next to her real eye. Mm -hmm. She's looking at a fake eye with a fake eye. It's, I don't know. Just well, weird. Well, 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 she's looking with her eye mm -hmm. through a fake eye into a camera, yes. which is the eye of the audience. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just yeah. love that little symbol. And also, I love the lore. I mean, this is, I'm sorry. We, we can be done at any time. But I just love the lore of this movie and like, mm -hmm. and like the little, this like, oh, there's also like the, they talk about the strange loop theory yeah, yeah. or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, this video or this is just all fake, almost like the, this, everything is in, uh, like the Matrix, you know, thing. But I, I don't know. I just love that they've made up these really detailed, we've already talked about yeah, this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I just love <laughs> it. And yeah, yeah, they're yeah. like, they talk about it like it's like shared knowledge mm -hmm. like almost like you know from my bringing up it's almost like a, like a bible story or something like that yeah well that reminds me of like the scp foundation what's the scp it's 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 this <laughs> it's this but like the scp so what it is it's is like wikipedia like, for urban legends or something no, no no um so so the spc foundation um within the lore Okay, what it is is like there are like these um, supernatural and paranormal threats mm -hmm. um, that threaten people. Mm -hmm. And the SCP Foundation secures, contains, and protects mm -hmm. people from, from these threats. Mm -hmm. And so the way that it started was it started out as like a Wikipedia, but people could put their own entries into these threats. Oh. So it's like a crown fund funded. It's, it, it, yeah, it's, yeah, it, it's like. 
like a like a thread, like a thread of. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Well, well, yeah, like like it was just like a crowd funded or you know crowd created mythology yeah okay yeah yeah of, of horror and you know monsters and you know other other effects and like you can even go on on youtube and people have made videos like explaining some of these you know they've made mm-hmm. their own animated videos you know explaining these threats that is so cool yeah that's so cool yeah i don't know i just love that about this movie um as well and i mean this movie again is very meta in the fact that it mm-hmm. is about stories yeah. The stories we tell ourselves mm-hmm. and the stories we pretend and the stories we believe in. Yeah, but but it's specifically, you know, creepypasta. Yeah. 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 It's so cool. I think this is a great double feature. Ringu and, <laughs> and this movie. Yeah, for sure. Absolutely. But I'm good to go. Okay, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't I don't have anything else to say about this movie. You know, it it's it's pretty good. It's very good and it reminds me a lot of myself in a lot of weird ways. <laughs> Um, I think it's very, you know, a lot of people will relate to it that are growing up now. I think it's going to be a cult classic. Mm -hmm. That's my prediction. Yeah. And I cannot wait to see what this person makes in the future. I think they're starting a a production company or something. And I think Emma Stone might be funding the next project, Mm -hmm. Um, but I'm excited. All right. Great. So yeah, that was, um, we're, we're all going to the world's fair. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was that movie. And um, this was us talking about that movie. Yep. And this is the end of the episode. <laughs> this is the end of the episode. We're ending. Yeah. So, yeah, take care, guys, and come back for the next episode. Bye now, y'all. Bye-bye, guys. What is it they say in the Beverly Hillbillies? Um, y'all come back now, you hear? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that. Yeah. Okay, yeah, that.